Hello, OWL members. I am thrilled to announce this month's Inside the OWL Studio will feature Lexitas, who has been a valued sponsor of OWL since 2015. Lexitas is a full-service, ophthalmic-focused biopharmaceutical solutions company focused on providing end-to-end -end eye care, support, and exceptional service. Their solutions include clinical trial and medical strategy services to pharmaceutical and biotechnology companies that are developing ophthalmology products, providing end-to-end -end support and development expertise in ophthalmology. We are so thrilled to have their support of OWL. Without further delay, I would like to welcome this month's interviewee, Dr. George McGrath, Chief Executive Officer at Lexitas. Dr. McGrath is also a board certified ophthalmologist and has worked in the clinical research industry for over five years. In addition to a medical degree, Dr. McGrath also holds an MBA from the Citadel and a master's in applied economics from John Hopkins University. Wow, and amazing, and welcome to Inside the Owl Studio, Dr. McGrath. Uh, thank you, Abigail. It's a pleasure, and we really appreciate you having us. Thank you. Um, we launched Inside the L Studio in 2021 with the goal of discussing diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging with Al's various partners. It has been a way of showcasing various initiatives and activities that companies are pursuing in this area to continually motivate the ophthalmic industry to improve and utilize best practices and ideas that they may learn from Inside the L Studio. With that being said, I'm very excited to hear from you about the Lexitas initiatives in this area. So I'm gonna yeah. hand it over to you. Yeah, sure. So yeah, we're, we're very excited about this and, and this is a priority within Lexitas. And we look at, uh, at diversity inclusion from two different angles at Lexitas. Number one is, is internally within Lexitas and making sure that we are creating a, a diverse and inclusive workplace for all of our um, 145 employees now, which is, which is grown. So it's really wonderful. Um, one, just a wonderful team. But number two is within the clinical trial space. And there's been a big push recently to make sure that when clinical trials are conducted, when new drugs are evaluated, mm -hmm. that we, that we do everything we can to, um, to be very diverse in the populations and to be very inclusive of the populations as well. And that's, that's crazy critically important to, uh, to, to not only, um, to not only the, uh, the, the robustness of the trial, but also with creating a, uh, a framework where when, when drugs do get approved, that we have the, the necessary data to um, be able to understand how the drug works in diverse and inclusive populations. So we work a lot with, with both of those aspects I would say for the first one internally at Lexitas, it, it starts with us really with, with, uh, with recognition of diversity and inclusiveness. And so we, we make it a, uh, a priority at, the, uh, at all levels within the company that we talk about it, right? And we have open discourse about how we can always be improving the Lexitas workspace and different things that we can do to make sure that we're bringing on new people from diverse and, um, backgrounds and making sure that those um, people, everybody within the company feels like they're in a great place to work where they can speak up, where they can give their opinion and their opinion is valued. And I think it really is a, is a tone that is set throughout the company. Um, one for an example of a specific um, initiative that we do in, in this, and there are a lot of them, but one specific initiative that, that we're very proud of is that most of our new hires, most of the people joining our team are referrals from various places within our organization. And so I think that that does a couple things, right? So that, that helps to make sure that we're getting a diverse workforce because we've got different people recommending different types of people from different backgrounds and different, um, and different, uh, different experiences. And that's, that's brought in some incredible talent and some incredible um, insight and, and viewpoints that are, that are, are, are very valuable to the company. Um, we do many other things similar to this, where we're really trying to make this a priority within our workforce. And we really are trying to create an environment not only where everybody is happy to work, but also an environment where, uh, where we really put 
people in a place where they can excel, where they feel like they're valued, they're, they're valued, their opinions are heard, their, um, their, their different viewpoints on issues are, are really uh, important to the company. And so I'm, I'm really thankful that we've created that environment and, and it really pays off in, in spades for us because the quality of our work product is so much better with a diverse and inclusive um, workforce. And, and with the second part of that, as far as clinical trials go, it's critically important for us to make sure, and it's actually, actually the FDA is, is, um, is helping with this. They've been very proactive with, with their view on diversity and inclusion within clinical trials. But we do this um, based on where we select clinical sites. We want a very diverse um, uh, geography. So we want sites that enroll patients in the clinical trials to be from, from different areas of the country and also from different, from different types of practices. We want um, practices that, uh, that truly will cater towards, um, towards different groups. And, and so we, we're very cognizant of that. We take really um, a lot of care when we, de when we design trials that the trials are going to promote diversity and inclusion. They're going to be, they're going to be uh, you know, any person in the country of any background should be able to complete the trials, should be able to do well and excel in the trials and should get a, a fair treatment within the trials. And so that's, that's something we pay a lot of attention to. And we pay a lot of attention to a lot of the details, like how, how is this treatment burden going to affect certain populations? How are the, are different people going to be able to get to different practices? You know, it's, it's very different going to a practice in New York city than it is in rural Montana. And so we, we take a lot of um, care and effort when we're designing the trials to make sure that our trials promote diversity and inclusiveness. So the next thing we do is we really are very, um, very proactive about making sure that all of our materials, all of our, um, everything that goes into the trial is, is very, um, is, is very understandable, um, very relatable and very pertinent to different populations. And so we, we do spend a, a lot of time thinking about that. And, and I'll tell you, it really makes for the clinical trials to be, to be more robust and it makes them better trials overall. Our investigators want to enroll them, patients want to be in them. It just, the, improving the diversity and inclusiveness of clinical trials is, is, is a wonderful thing. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and you are only the second interview that I've done that has mentioned the clinical trials aspects. So kudos to you. Um, I, I think I'm going to walk backwards a little bit and start with the clinical trials just to summarize for our audience a little bit. I think when you have, you know, a diverse patient population, um, you know, coupled with obviously a diverse practice population that you're going to to enroll these trials. Um, I'm, I'm assuming, um, you know, and I know this is a dull moment, but that should be a really, really good thing for patient outcomes, you know, long-term um, with whatever drug device you're kind of developing. Um, I, I think that's only a good thing um, for patient care, mm -hmm. um, you know. You're absolutely right about that. That's, that's the true reason why we do it is because right. When drugs are studied in diverse populations, it's going to lead to better health outcomes in the long term in diverse populations. Yes, absolutely. And I just wanted to hit that home for the audience because that's why we are all in this industry, um, you know, for, for better patient care, better patient outcomes. So I think that's fantastic. Now, going back to your internal initiatives, mm -hmm. what I heard, which I really love, is that because you're pulling from inside of Lexitas, it sounds like you are creating a lot of um, individuals or employees that are going to have maybe cross-functional experience. So mm -hmm. they may not be pigeonholed in marketing or R and D, and maybe they, you know, and and that in itself over time creates a more diverse uh, experience for that individual, which is obviously I think a better thing long term, um, you know, for an organization that has an employee that has multiple experiences kind of um, within their 
um, professional, uh, you know, role. Um, yeah. I just want to make sure because I, you know, I think that's great. And, and I think it's very important for, yeah. and, and also you, you mentioned, you know, you want people to excel, you know, mm -hmm. someone that may start in one, one area you might find has a strength over here that mm -hmm. you would never know unless you really um, worked with that person and, and, and tried to give them additional um, kind of roles and responsibilities. It happens all the time. I mean, we're, we're very, cognizant that we want everybody in the company to sort of be exposed at least to the, the generalities of different um, cross-functional parts of the organization for exactly the reasons that you, you noted. And we do see that. And we see people who will come to us and they'll say, hey, you know, I really feel like my experience, my skill set is it could be a real value add in this sector um, of the right. company. And, and we do that and we see, you know, I see my, my, my job at Lexitas is really to support the employees. And so my job is to take this group of 140 people and put people in places where they can excel and they can do well and give them the support they need to, to, to function well. And so when somebody is, is excited about an area and, and thinks that they're a great fit, we're all ears for it. And we, we, we actually love that. So it's, it's great. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I think that wraps it up for me, George, do you have any closing remarks or anything else you'd like to add for our audience today? Now, the only thing I would say is that this is, this is such an important topic and, and we really appreciate you and Al um, hitting on this and touching on this. And, and we're, we're, we're just very thankful to be involved. Thank you. And likewise, you know, our mission at OWL is advancing diversity and leadership. And, uh, you know, I think the end game is, is to hit that belonging where people feel very safe in their work environment. So, um, you know, we're going to move on to some of the, the fun questions here for you, George. Um, what is your favorite word in eye care? I would have to be glockenflecken. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love it. Um, please explain. <laughs> <laughs> so, so glaucomplecan is a uh, is a, is an ophthalmic condition. Obviously, it has to do with glaucoma. But uh, but there's two reasons. Number one is I like the word. It's a cool word to say. But number two is if you guys haven't checked it out, there's a really great um, TikTok or Instagram um, ophthalmologist who makes little parody videos, and his name is Doctor Glaucomplecan. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, what is uh, your least favorite word in? Yeah, uh, that would have to be endophthalmitis. That's the fear. The fear I know that. <laughs> the fear thing that that could happen after any kind of ophthalmic procedure. So, I, I always uh, that that word makes the uh, hair stand up on the back of my neck. So, <laughs> and I know now I'm talking to a surgeon. <laughs> um, what other professional role in eye care, um, other than the one you have, would you like to um, attempt and why? Uh, that's a good question. So, um, you know, I, I've, so my career, I've absolutely, I've been, it's been incredibly fortunate and blessed and, and lucky. I've, I've been able to be a practicing ophthalmologist, which was amazing. Um, and then also to work at Lexitas where we've developed drugs. And then the, um, the, the, the last part that I would love to be in is, is truly, um, truly taking a, a drug, not just as a contractor, but just taking a drug from start to finish um, and getting it approved and, and seeing it potentially help people. So that's, that would be cool. Kind of watch that baby grow up, right? Um, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> now, is there a role that you, you say, I, no way. I, I really don't want to do that one. The role that I could not do, and it's not because I don't, I, the people in this role are so talented at what they do, but I would be not very good at it, would be a, to be a dry eye specialist. <laughs> that's, that's just an incredibly hard disease to treat. And we have such great treatments and more coming out every year. And, and what they do with these patients is amazing, and, and, but it's it's very, very hard job. So. Yeah. yeah. And I think those patients are so, you know, everyone's different, you know, one thing may work for one, not the other, you know, all the various factors. I agree. It's, it's a tough exactly. one. Right. Um, yes. So if, if you uh, could do one thing to contribute to, 
diverse leadership in eye care, what would it be? The one thing that I think is so important for diversity and inclusion in eye care is to make sure that our treatments are being developed in a way that is inclusive and diverse. And then our treatments are then approved and disseminated in a diverse and inclusive manner. And so the one thing that that's really uh, close to my heart and that, that I, I really wish I could do more for and that I, I've, I've really tried to do more of is to, um, is to make sure that our, the treatments that we do have are available to everybody and that it's, it's open and, and everybody f- feels like they, they have access and that they're able to get the treatments that they need. Um, that's, I love that. that's, that's a wonderful, um, wonderful way that you could, you know, potentially contribute, um, you know, and I think just staying on top of that is, is the way to go. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I hope people hearing that really it resonates with them. Um, one last question, and this is the fun one. <laughs> if um, you were a drink, what would you be? If you were a type of beverage, what would you be? <laughs> what would I be? That's, that's an interesting one. So I, um, I would have to say that, uh, that... <laughs> I would be, I would be sort of like an, an alkaline water, kind of boring, but then a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That is the best answer so far. I love it. I love it. Oh my goodness. George, thank you so much for your time. That was awesome. Um, I'm really, really happy uh, that you're leading the chart at, at Lexitas. Um, this has been awesome. And again, part of this whole interview series is for other companies and other individuals to hear what you're doing and maybe take some ideas away um, and, and really implement that maybe in their organizations or their practices. So I really appreciate your time and Lexitas' support. Um, and we'll sign off now. I love it. Thank you, Abigail. Yeah. Thank you, George. Have a good one.